Hey, hello, it's a shrimp too. So we've already done a nostalgic video for the first X Mortis game, so it makes sense now to do the X Mortis 2. Welcome to the apocalypse and many dead bodies of all ages. And um, if you watched the, my first video, this doesn't have as much reading as the first game, but like the, the reading parts are still timestamped. So if you want to skip the reading, you are valid. You do you. Or, you know, if you just want me to read spooky game things at you only, like, you know, you just... Let's get spooky. Ex mortis facts. Turn the lights down and the sound up for maximum atmosphere. Be right back. Atmospheric enough? Some sounds used in this game were obtained from actual EVP recordings. Oh, actually, that's cool. I'm not quite binge mode yet, but I'm on the path to a lockdown ghost adventures binge, so I'm just like... Spooky ghost things? Yes. Some images within this game are taken from real haunted locations around Australia. Oh, that's cool! Again, spook it up. Spook it up. While this story stands on its own, certain elements from the original game are referred to within. Please visit newsgrounds.com to refresh your memory. <clears throat> I have a video up for the first game, so like, if you want to go do that, you can. Certain scenes are very CPU intensive. Full screen mode is not recommended above resolutions of 800... We'll be fine. We're in the future. Teens for graphic content and profanity, the title is not recommended for children. Yeah. <laughs> Full disclaimer, because this is as far as I went before I set up my recording. That little face is going to scream when we hit play. Let's hit play! <laughs> Told ya. Mass murder and news reports. Hordes of Ex Mortis sweep across the earth, a plague unlike anything humanity had ever encountered. In their final stand, a handful of mankind's last survivors stood their ground, defiant of their inevitable fate. And in those last moments, as death took these brave souls, a stranger passing in the distance put his plans in motion. Ooh. Where is your god now? Rendezvous point. This barren wasteland stretches in most directions as far as the eye can see. Sometimes I wonder if there's anything left to fight for. Oh, I believe. But look, we have a beautiful... Instead of a house, this time we have a beautiful little... We have a church. We have a beautiful... I'm sorry, the buildings seem better days. <laughs> we have a beautiful red sky. The mountain range overshadows the terrain. It was once teeming with life, but now as barren as the rest of this planet seems to be. Oops. Don't right click. <laughs> the cross used to be a symbol of hope. Now it is nothing but a reminder of humanity's foolishness to have held such pointless faith. <laughs> An old automobile is rather awkwardly parked next to the church. The abandoned church was to be the resistance rendezvous point after the final stand against the ex mortis. I say it was. Oh, someone has written, Where is your God now? When the ex mortis emerged, faith in our religions quickly turned into spiritual resentment. I can understand that. This story leads inside. I only hope that beyond its darkness I will find some survivors of the battle of the Ex Mortis. I'm going with not likely, but um, you never know. The Rural Church. The priest's pulpit stands at the head of the church. Hey look, bloody footprints. Holy shit, there may be nothing living left in here, but I'm definitely not alone. It isn't one of the Ex Mortis though. I would be dead by now if it was. Into the confession. Whatever it was that just walked in, it entered this confessional booth, and it doesn't seem to want to let me in to this particular booth. Okay, I'll get to you, spooky McFootprinter, but I want to read things first. The priest's pulpit stands at the head of the church. A large Bible sits atop, open to the chapter Revelations, End of Days. How appropriate! 
statue of Christ looks over the room, which was once filled with his faithful followers. What I see now is all that is left of them. Are there meant to be bodies in this, um, a, a truck? All the windows in this church look like they were boarded up a long time ago. To keep something out or to keep something in? It's a fun question in horror movies. And the fun plot twist when it's like, This wasn't meant to keep things out, it was meant to keep something in! Ah! Each pew is kind of a thick layer of dust. There hasn't been a living thing in here for a very long time. Can I be the only survivor of the battle? Quite frankly, buddy, I don't even know how you survive. Ooh, skylight. Unintentional skylight. Light pours into the church through a hole in the roof. While you can see the crimson sky, which serves as a constant reminder of what has transpired. This side of the booth is empty. Something or someone is clearly in the other booth. And we're gonna find out what or who. A statuette of the Christian Messiah hangs suspended on the wall in this booth. Not really an odd thing to see in a place of worship such as this. Nope. Door of the commission booth in. Now that I'm in here, something seems to be holding the door shut. Spooky. The window looks through the other booth. Whoever is in the other booth is looking back at me. What could he want? Yeah, that's a question. Mr. Halley, please sit for my time here is limited. I take it the battle didn't go as planned. An unfortunate inevitability, I'm afraid. Nevertheless, it has aided and allowed me the passage I require to make contact with you. The exmortus know you're here, so I must be brief. All might seem lost to you in this dark hour, however, I am here to bring you hope when you have none. I have here with me a parchment which you will do well to read carefully. The knowledge within its pages will shed light on your path towards removing the scourge and allowing mortal man to begin rebuilding. I don't doubt that you are wondering if I am trustworthy or not. However, at this point, neither you nor the remaining fragments of humanity have anything left to forfeit. I'm afraid mankind's fate rests on your next course of action. For your sake, I hope you make the right choice. Me too. Okay. So for one, Mr. Shadowy Hat Man, who's not human, but seems to be inside of humanity. Awfully convenient. Bit suspicious. You could say in a horror situation, because trust no one. Trust no one. For two, fate of humanity rests on our choices and our, on our little shoulders. Um, uh, no pressure. What could go wrong? But alrighty then, let's, um, read the thing. A pot, oh. A vile stench hangs in the air that was trapped by this enclosed booth. If I can't see that entity, at least next time I'll know I'll smell him coming. Okay, on the one hand, you know, I don't want to judge, but on the other hand, when is a bad smell with an, a non-human entity ever a good sign? Prophecy of the Hand One night, I dreamed. A darkness, once dormant, patiently waiting, was now emerging from the shadows. A light growing brighter from beyond a dark chasm, wrapping around a pillar stained with ancient symbols. Many millions of shrieks and screams engulfed me where I stood until I felt the burn rise up from the floor and it too consumed me. My soul, ripped from my shell, was flattened and became a pathway. It became a link between the ancient world and my reality. Unspeakable monstrosities crossed over and began devouring every living thing. And then, a fiend of unspeakable size and malevolence looked at me and smiled as he crossed into my world. He introduced himself as the Ancient of the Ex Mortis, Flay. I could see myself, a tattered, broken man, suddenly imbued with an insatiable power. I felt a sudden drive to destroy all that I knew and return it all to how it used to be before light and life. I saw myself become the hand of Ex Mortis. I saw what was, what is, and what will be. I then saw a strange dagger plunge deep into me, a man holding it, a mere mortal, and something else in the shadows. 
But then the darkness took me as I fell to my knees, and the pathway crumbled, my soul lost forever. I don't dare to dream again for fear of what other horrors await. Okay. Well, up to, like, this part is, like, yeah, that's, like, the first game. Stuff in that. So is this the part that's relevant to us now? Property of Lockyer Fields Ranch. I know that place. It's not far from here. How convenient. But with the ex mortis fast approaching, how am I going to get there? I mean, there is a car outside, so, um... Okay. I guess now we... Door leads back outside the rear of the church. I can now click on that, so, you know, it's gotta be the way. Ernie's not gonna help. The X-Mars be on me like a flash. I wouldn't last 30 seconds. Think full. Tracks my kit this old rust bucket. The car still works. As old as it is, I still need a key to start. I wish I knew how to hotwire this thing. Oh no, I need a key. I've fallen through a couple of slats. This wooden board patch will have my hand is too large to fit through the gap to retrieve them. Oh no. Oh, what's this? Coat hanger. Yes. Yes, get this. Keys. Go. That scary cloud is getting close, because it's no cloud. That's the X mortis. Savior's legacy. This land was probably grassed as far as the eye could see, but now, like everything else, it died under the cruel red sky. It's kind of a nice red sky, but I get that it's kind of ominous. I just like red, okay? I'm biased. No ominous, fast approaching clouds. Seems I managed to outrun the Ex Mortis. I'm sure that it won't take them too long to find me again, though. Probably not. This is the Lockyer Fields Ranch. The document from the church led me to. What possible significant significant What possible significance could this place have in the scheme of things? Yeah, well, you know, I think it started in a random house out in the middle of the woods, so you know. You'd be surprised. Well, the door leads inside. I don't know what awaits for me inside, or what I'm even looking for. I've got a feeling I won't have to wait long to find out. Nope. Hey, look, it's haunted. <laughs> that, this picture frame fell off the wall when the door slammed shut behind me. Mm. It seems to be a very old portrait of a man and a small girl. Perhaps a previous occupant of this place? Perhaps so. Uh, this double set of doors leads into adjacent hall, if my taking the place from outside is correct. Somewhat similar to the one on my right, but it seems to be in working order. Doors, they work. It appears to be a service hatch or some kind of air conditioning duh uh Slide stream under the door. I could have sworn that I saw a silhouette walk past. Yeah, yeah, me too. Door that door leads to, an, to another room. Doors lead to rooms. Oh, hey. Look, that poor bastard had his eyes, arms, legs, and heart ripped from him. Only if the ex mortis are capable of this kind of cruelty. I've watched too much true crime lately, but I'm not going to comment. <laughs> set of shelves are littered with ornaments and various fine dining implements left by the former occupants of this house. One of those Sudoku puzzles sits on the table here. They used to be all the rage, but I never really got hooked. Three inner squares of the puzzle are highlighted. Yo, we get to solve the puzzle. <laughs> this lamp used to serve a purpose, but now it is nothing but a mere reminder of a life and a luxury that I once had. Flashes of lightning and claps of thunder still shake the barren landscape seen through this curtain. The beam in the center of this room that the man hangs from doesn't even seem to be bowing slightly from the weight of his lifeless torso. Much amount of this man's blood pulls beneath his lifeless hanging form. I curse under my breath at the ex mortis for their inhuman brutality. Is there any, um... I don't think this game is like the first one in the symbols by the bodies, but, um, uh, let's see. The door at the end of the corridor seems to be unlocked, but it is being blocked from the other side by something. The dissimilar door. Let's check. Okay, let's check out the dissimilar door. Oh, it's a closet. An assortment of children's clothes, coats, and jumpers hang in this closet. As much as I need a fresh set of clothes that aren't covered in blood, I doubt anything here fits me. Various metal and plastic coat hangers cling to the rod in the closet. A coat hanger saved my ass earlier, but I see no purpose in carrying one around with me now. On the top shelf here sits a small pile of knitted woollen blankets. I became 
I well, I became, no, I welcome the smell of mothballs over the scent of rotting flesh that seems to infect everything these days. Yeah. There's a toolbox on the floor. It has a small padlock on it, which has numbers. Okay. Well, we have found our first puzzles. The stairs lead up to the second level. They're not really covered in too much dust, so it seems this place may have only recently been occupied. Imagine. Get out, you say. Clearly there is some kind of entity in this house that doesn't agree with my presence here. Nevertheless, this door just doesn't want to budge open. You know how at the start the game is all like, uses some real EVPs? I don't know like all of what audio is and isn't, but um, I know it's on the blog for like X Mortis 3. The ye oldy blog mentions, I think, the get out is one, and I'm just like, mm -hmm. A door to my meat right takes, leads into an adjacent room. Yes, I do. More death! She's in the bed herself with the blood of this poor woman. This naked female corpse in the bed here has a massive hole in her chest. Oh, where's the heart? Large butter, of course, seems to have hit the wall. Pictures of local structures are hanging on the wall in here. Anything. The bedside table has a small drawer here. All it contains is a Bible. I'd take it with me if I was still a religious man. Lamp shades on both sides of the bed are stained with blood. Everything's bloody. Poor family. Oh. Oh, if yeah, I forgot about that bit. The blood soaked sheet has been draped over the bodies of these dead children. If the ex mortis did this, who would have covered them with the sheet? Yeah, someone's been here. Children! No matter how many times I bear witness to such inhumanities, I just can't get used to it. The ex mortis must have swept through here recently. Yeah, there's like three of them? That's, that's sad. A zipper lighter rests on the floor. Okay. Uh, we'll take that. Oh boy. I think that's all to this room. We can leave that horror behind. There's a rather large wet patch on the floor at the entrance of this particular room. So it's going to probably be found behind this door. Which means that's likely the bathroom. And I do remember the bathroom from this game. There's a fair amount of blood on the floor here. Whoever it belongs to was probably dragged to the bathtub from the looks of it. The toilet is splattered with a small amount of blood. There's no point in opening the lid. What do I expect to find in there other than the obvious? Seems that the water slide of this place is still functional. The tap seems to be working just fine. A set of pull down blinds hangs in front of these windows. Well, whatever all that blood is from, trolley totally behind the shower curtain. Yeah. The bath is stained with the blood of a recent kill, but whatever the blood is, this is, it's no longer in the tub. Am I confusing my bathroom scenes? I am convinced at some point in an Ex Mortis game there is a body in a bathtub, but now I'm like, have I, like, pulled that from something else? Or is it later? Or... Because <laughs> every time I'm like, I go into a bathroom, like, body? No. But this, maybe, maybe I just remembered blood and my brain went probably body. Oh, well. Might have been any of the other victims, after all. Another door far end of the left. Yes. What's in here? Ghost children, the best kind. The blood of the little girl stains the wall and floor here. She didn't even see it coming. I can still feel her melancholy presence in this room. It's a corkboard hanging on the wall here. It is covered in newspaper clippings of recent events. Probably right up until the press stopped running, at least. Ooh, newspaper clip titled Mass Murder. Oh, jeez. Ah. Uh. This is not pleasant on the eyes, but ghastly accounts of the murders of 28 people in San Remy last night came flooding into local authorities as it was revealed that the attackers were of unknown identity or origin. Little is known at this point in time, however, the gruesome nature of the murders has led police to make no official statement. Eric Barber, 23, was a witness to one of the numerous eviscerations in San Remy? 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 
It was a demon from hell that just jumped out of the shadows and tore into that poor man. He was gutted like a fish. I barely made it out alive. San Raimi was a township of just 30 people, however. After last night's events, it will surely become a ghost town. Oofed. A newspaper clip titled 500 Killed as Township of New Hunter Burns. Oof. Surrounding the rural, surrounding rural communities of New Hunter are in shock today as it was revealed that an estimated 500 people were gruesomely killed by mar marauding assailants. Local enforcement authorities are adamant that the recent spate of murders is not only increased and that the investigation into similar killings in surrounding towns is making valuable ground on a daily basis. Police have issued a statement claiming that all evidence points to a satanic cult. Eyewitness accounts have led police to further claim that men disguised in extremely lifelike Halloween costumes have been perpetrating these insidious murders. Yeah, real lifelike. Very real. Yeah. Hmm. From all further accounts, these murders appear to not be gender or race specific, and there is no clear pattern or a common method of execution. At this point, local authorities are being light, tight-lipped about the specific details of these murders. The families of the victims will be notified upon the seemingly mammoth job of identifying the bodies, which were left strewn about the streets and houses of New Hunter. Residents in surrounding townships are asked to stay indoors after dark and are urged not to panic. Yeah, that'll save you. Infantry mobilized, martial law declared. Major cities under siege. And major cities under siege. The cities of Los Angeles and San Francisco fell victim overnight to the recent human massacre phenomenon that has swept across rural towns in the past fortnight. There is an estimated body count of close to 300,000 people in both major cities as of last night. Washington is yet to respond to another massacre as once again citizens are left without answers as to the origin of the assailants that seem to be perpetrating this hideous murdering spree. LA and San Francisco police are working frantically to combat the marauding menace in an attempt to prevent further metropolitan casualties. The deployment overnight of 1,500 officers and 100 federal agents has so far failed to halt the onslaught. Police sources indicate that they have suffered almost a 75% casualty rate thus far. Ex mortis, judgment day? Ex mortis, the mere mention of the name of these self-appointed executioners of humanity is enough to send a shiver down anyone's spine. There isn't a soul left amongst us that has an answer to this plague of genocide. Our police and army has crumbled and was put to death like lambs to the slaughter. Our families and loved ones have all been butchered. Our land, trees, and animals wilt and die under this new red sky. We are all familiar with the images of our major cities in ruin, gutted by this horde of demons and supernatural entities. Whilst other countries looked on in shock and horror, yet confident in their own isolation from this cruel fate. But now, reports of similar extinctions in China, Russia, and many European countries. This isn't the destruction of America. This is the extinction of mankind. This is Judgment Day. So they tried to nuke them. This is the front page of a newspaper with a picture of the first nuke dropped on the ex mortis. Remember that day, sitting glued to my TV watching the coverage. It worked so well, huh? Vatican City devastation, 11 p.m. Sunday, the words the Catholic and Christian communities of the world have never dreamed possible were echoed over the airwaves of every remaining radio station. Vatican City was in ruins. The Pope and his clergy were all dead, the last bastion of hope and religious faith that mankind had held up until that point drifted away with the clouds of the storm the ex mortis rode in on. In the days leading up to the devastation, the familiar images of the sky turning red as a precursor to the scourge's arrival became obvious. Rome and the Vatican prepared themselves as best they could. Millions of Rome's locals flocked to the Vatican gates in the hope that the holiest landmark on earth would be the safest place from what they believed were the minions of Satan. At about 
9 p.m. on Sunday, the clouds fell upon Rome, and it only took an hour before many millions of people were left slaughtered or trampled in the ensuing chaos. Even so soon after news of the Vatican falling, reports worldwide of mass suicides in the remaining untouched areas of Europe, Australia, and Africa began flooding in. Mass denunciation of religions has begun. A world once so dominated by people of unwavering faith in their deities is now virtually stripped of any religion. Churches and other places of worship have been attacked and burned to the ground in London, Paris, Sydney, and Hong Kong. People caught praying are sat upon by angry mobs, intent on displaying their anger at being cheated for so long. The world has surely become a darker place as a horrible revelation that we are. I, I, I get, like, you know, probably literally losing any sort of faith if you have it to begin with is, like, probably a big deal and a lot to deal with in an apocalyptic situation, theoretically speaking. But wouldn't you be more focused on survival than, um, you know, bothering people praying and attacking churches? But then again, there are a lot of ways that, you know, we thought humanity would react a little different in <clears throat> certain global current events. Assailants named Police sources overnight have revealed the identity of the group responsible for the mass murders across the central, western, and west coasts. I'm reading this so out of order. <laughs> Over the past month, the group identified as the Ex Mortis has been laying waste to every settlement, town, and city in its path. Scenes of unimaginable violence and carnage have dominated television sets across the world. Early reports of this threat are being, as being a satanic cult have since been dismissed after the more recent graphic images were leaked from the information-controlled archives within the federal government. The many thousands of assailants depicted in the new footage has led analysis to believe that the ex mortis is not of human origin. Inhuman speed, strength, and ferocity have led us to believe that these are creatures of unknown species and origin, not human or any animal that we know of. State of Anarchy, Washington in flames. Government spokesman Michael Gaddis has confirmed the rumor and speculation over the nature of the ex mortis. We have evidence to support the recent notions that the horde we refer to as the ex mortis are indeed not of human origin. With the limited scientific analysis we were able to perform on a captured sentient how did they capture? Um, we have determined that the creature is in fact not of any species that we are at all familiar with. Further analysis is currently being undertaken, however thus far we have made some startling observations of their behavior patterns and capabilities. The creatures tend to work together, almost as if they are of one mind, so perfectly programmed to know the movements and intentions of each other that it is quite unnerving. We have also observed the remarkable strength, agility, and speed of these creatures. Nothing comes even close to possessing these attributes to the degree that these creatures exhibit. Further to their physical abilities, we have also noted numerous supernatural abilities, including telekinesis and mental projection. Bloodbath. Hey, this one's pretty readable. Bloodbath. UN War of Offensive Backfires. The United Nations Consolidated World Army Offensive against the main front of the Ex Mortis was declared a failure in the early hours of this morning. The Ex Mortis push into Western Europe was, ex was halted for all of six hours as UN forces launched the first of their planned Take the Battle to Them assaults in an attempt to push the marauding demons back into Asia. It is estimated that a staggering 40% of the World Army was lost in the initial hours of the attack. However, some advances were made in pushing the front back over the Italian border. The UN's controversial decision to use their armament of nuclear-tipped ICBMs appeared to pay off at 3.30 a.m. when numerous mushroom clouds were spotted on the horizon over the Swiss Alps. French and Russian bio-divisions were immediately deployed to continue the pushback. However, the first sign of failure came at 5.45 a.m. When contact with ARD... Advanced recon divisions indicated 100% casualties of the bio divisions. Oof. It took an hour before the front returned to the earlier eastern French line and the final order for retreat was given. 
a staggering overall loss of an estimated 89% of world army forces is expected to be announced to the media once the United Nations Council assembles for an emergency debriefing later today. It was the bloodiest battle in the history of mankind. It can also be considered to be the fastest and the worst loss ever endured. A newspaper clip entitled Red Sky Approaching Storm. Scientists claim that they are unsure as to why our sky has started turning red. It is no coincidence that the staining of the sky commenced with the emergence of the ex mortis threat, but the scientific community can find no explanation for this strange ph phenomenon. We are currently working on the theory that the strange cloud formations, which follow the main front of the ex mortis assault, is somehow linked to the, to the reddening of our skies. The evidence that supports this theory is that the red sky ph phenomenon seems more concentrated around the Exmortis front and its wake. <sighs> Japan and China demolished millions more dead. Newspaper has clipped up the United Nations supports consolidated force. How backwards am I reading this? Today, the new head of the United Nations, Kara Tharango? announced the consolidation of the remaining armies of the world in a last-ditch attempt to halt the advancing ex mortis scourge. We believe that the last chance of survival humanity has is to put aside our petty differences and work together to combat the greatest threat we as a race will ever face. Evidence communicated to us from the remaining splinters of the scientific community in the U.S. indicates to us that the creatures of the ex mortis are not indestructible. Physical harm can be brought upon these creatures to incapacitate them. The strength of the ex mortis comes from the insurmountable and seemingly endless numbers. We remain confident that a concise and concentrated strike against the main front of the ex mortis assault will halt their advance and allow us to push them back to the Asian nations. Uh, yeah, it just didn't work out for them. Someone has called no hope in what looks like blood. Small hope? But hey, a key. Key hanging from the pin. Don't know what we'll need it for, but we need it for something. Well, that was a charming and depressing dive into the rabbit hole that is apocalypse news and headlines and fish. Well, the only place we haven't investigated is this um, service hatch or some kind of air conditioning duct, so, okay. It's too dark to see anything in the shaft. I better not push forward without knowing where I'm going. Gee, if only we had a lighter. I was waiting on that. I was like, no, no, there's something. Oh. I taste your soul. It is a beacon of light in a time of such darkness. Your presence suggests that I spent eternity in Jamira. My name is Savior. Pay reference to my word. I thought this might be his house. His previous house. Um. <laughs> It's tight and extremely claustrophobic to this in this shaft. It appears to be some kind of air conditioning or airflow duct. Thankfully, it's large enough for me to move through. Next turn right, okay. Light streams and crawl space through the vent. Beyond here lies another room, but I can't seem to make it. Yeah, we, uh, there's screws. We need a screwdriver. Which means, oh, what's that? No, that's just, I hope that was something sitting there, but that's just, just part of the vent. I'm just gonna save you my time spent with numbers. <laughs> Now we have that, and the only other thing that uh, we know of that has uh, three number significance is the little clock on this, so presumably, hopefully, you would think, yes! And now perhaps we can get a little screwdriver? Some of the tools and some screwdriver in here that might be, yes, give me the screwdriver, let me go. <laughs> so happy in an apocalypse. <laughs> I like the sound effect. Donk. Is 
that's fine. Or death. The body of the man is slumped over the table. From here, it looks like a self-inflicted gun wound did the damage. Don't blame you, buddy. It's just the kitchen sink. There's nothing special in it from the looks of it. Hmm. This window looks out to the north. There's not much to see, with exception to the numerous rotting animal carcasses littering the field. Overhead lights used to be electrical, but have since been converted to house small candles since the grid went out, I presume. The store leads outside into the back of this place. Things probably won't be any safer outside than it is in here. No, probably safer in here than out, right? CERN is filled with what I assume to be the ashes of a former resident here. Charles is engraved on its exterior. Do you think Charles and Xavier being here is a coincidence or a planned name choice. A bloodied gun lies on the table next to this corpse. It appears to be the weapon he used to take his own life. The gun is loaded with five bullets. Okay, we have gun. Let's shoot our way out of our problems. <laughs> The way this place looks as torn up as the front does. One hell of a horde of creatures must have torn this place up in a frenzy recently. Stairs back up to the kitchen door and inside there's currently closed. The key I have fits perfectly into this lock. How convenient. The darkness of the cellar sends a chill up my spine. There's a set of stairs that lead down into the shadows. Well, time to explore the shadows. <coughs> I like what we do in the shadows, but a little more apocalyptic and less vampires. It's a pile of cardboard boxes filled with clothing, heirlooms, and other generally uninteresting items. Someone's prepared to spend a lot of time down here. This large polymer bottle on the ground here is empty, but from the smell of it, it was probably once was filled with petroleum. Nice foundation work. I'm glad I forked out the dollars to have my old house done by professionals. Ha! <laughs> Not that it really matters much now. A pile of old and tattered books sits both on the floor and on the table to my right. There's nothing much of interest in here from a quick glance through their spines. Another cardboard box lies open to my right. This one is filled with cables and various electronic devices. All of these are useless to me unless the power is magically restored. Another stack of books sits on the table to my right. A lot of these are old but blank and bound by leather. A battery-powered CB radio sits on the table against the wall. Yes, radio! A hot water tank and gas cylinder sit at the far end of the cellar. Unfortunately, a warm shower is out of the question as both units are no longer functional. That's sad. Showers are nice. Okay, radio. Um. look much older than the other piles scattered around this room. Wait, quite a few of these are authored by a familiar name. Xavier. Xavier Rehaim. It's reading time! Vetus Hostilis Ex Mortis. Xavier Rehaim, 1902. My dear reader, many years have passed since I cast my thoughts to the memories of my demons. For my story is one of captive torment. Years of tortured labor to stay one step ahead of the constant threat of lunacy. Indeed, I pain to recall the torment endured for those years around the end of my young daughter Gwen's life, for she was lost to my blade, and it pains me deeply, however, as much as my hand was forced by them. My captors, Yes, the demons that haunted my house, the possession of my poor daughter, they turned her into a puppet, 
held her soul for ransom in return for the translation of the text titled The Book of Ex Mortis. Of course I did as they wanted, however I fear that such work will come with dire consequences. If not for I, then certainly for mankind. Can confirm. When they returned her to me for a mere minute, only to take her away from me again, I realized that Gwen was gone and never to return. I suppose, in a way, I wasn't killing my daughter. I was killing the demons that took hold of her. I digress. My purpose for penning this text is not to alleviate the pained memories I carry with me, nor is it to gain unwarranted sympathy for my eternal plight. I ultimately utilize this medium to serve a dire warning to whatever years of humanity we as a species have left on Earth. An unspeakable evil resides in the hills, not half a day's trek from my current abode here in Lockyer Fields. I have witnessed firsthand the cruelty of the entities I have come to know as the Ex Mortis. I can only further elaborate on the threat these beings pose upon humanity once I have summarized the nature of the beast. To understand the history of one's enemy is to be one step closer to salvation. The following is a summation of the Book of Ex Mortis. Cool, we got a summary of the book from the first game. The Ancient Dominion War. In a time before life and light, corporal beings did roam our lands, ruling over those smaller and less powerful sentients. These fiends of great power and might were many in number, but their greed to exert their dominion over others saw these lands bathed in the permanent blood-stained hue of war. Many ancients and lesser sentients were slaughtered in the resulting conflicts. Eventually only three ruling beings remained. The merciless Kafta. Lord Kafta held rule over a vast army of sentients, having single-handedly delivered the death blow to the majority of opposing ancients. His power was only exceeded by his hunger for total control and the effect of purging of his enemies. The manipulator Flay. While Lord Flay's armies were by no means comparable in size to his opponents, they fought with a great ferocity and unwavering loyalty to his rule was the belief that he had a gift of influence over others that made it almost impossible to remove oneself from his service. He was considered the general's general. The tactician Azrael. Lord Azrael's armies were slightly smaller than those of Kafta, and he was in no manner as influential as his brother, Flay. However, he was created as a ruler and a master tactician. If there was a way of turning the tide of victory against an aggressor, Azrael would carry it out effectively. The age-old war continued to rage on between the three remaining ancients, but the tide had turned in the final assault on Flay's loyal armies. Azrael, being the master tactician, had realized that the inevitable victory here leading to the eventual confrontation with Kafta's forces would result in defeat. Kafta's armies were numerous, and the only way for him to defeat them would be to work with Flay against the greater enemy. In the wake of the destruction of Flay's last bastion, Azrael had his brother captured, but instead of disposing of him, he asked of him to lead their consolidated armies against the mighty forces of Kafta. Flay had no choice but to agree, and lead Azrael's armies he did. It was the bloodiest battle to have ever been fought, and eventually Lord Flay plunged his sword deep into the heart of Kafta, his life force stolen from him. Kafta crumbled and perished. Flau had won complete control of the Earth Realm for Azrael to rule over. However, Lord Azrael had learnt from the history of ancients before him and had decided to have Flay destroyed before he could carry out the inevitable treacherous challenge to his rule. But what he did not count on was the extent of Flay's influence on his armies. Azrael was soon deposed from his throne, and Flay destroyed his corporal form to assume control of his new consolidated dominion. Emergence of the Ex Mortis Over many millennia, Lord Flay ruled with an iron fist over all sentience. None would dare oppose his word, 
but in time his power of influence diminished and a faction of the lesser beings had his corporal form destroyed and his ethereal form banished to roam the lands forever as an earth-bound entity. Plague diminished greatly in power and was doomed to be unable to physically affect the world around him. However, he still had many followers to which he spiritually combined his life force when they too were stripped of their corporal form. The Legion of Ex Mortis was born, and over the course of millions of years did it grow stronger and work towards regaining the power of influence and totalitarian control of the Earth realm. The Soul Bearers Over the millions of years following Flay's removal, the Earth took on a different look. The grounds turned green and lush with vegetation, while the sky was no longer stained with the blood of the ancient Dominion War. Strange beasts appeared in the land and in the oceans, but the most significant of these creatures to emerge was man. For it seemed that these fragile beings possessed a gift. It was a gift that would grant them with great power over the roaming, malevolent demons and spirits of the ancient world. Man was born with a soul. Over many thousands of years, man destroyed the remaining evil earth realm sentients and entities. The scores of entities that had survived the Earth's metamorphosis had been destroyed forever. But unbeknownst to man, the powerful Ex Mortis lay dormant, surviving through their strength in numbers and reveling in their wisdom of their ancient leader, Lord Flay. The Hand of Death. The blood of five innocent soul bearers marked with the symbols of the ancient Flay has the power to bridge the gap between the ethereal plane of existence and the earth as dominated by man and beast today. The influenced man shall become the hand, his soul's pathway and the source of strength for the demonic horde. The Book of Ex Mortis in its original Aramaic form went on to detail the further ritualistic orientation of the link between our world and the spiritual plane described quite frequently as the ancient land. I dare not put pen to paper again for the reproduction of the incantation of the hand for fear of my tainted soul. Following the tragedy that was my daughter, Gwen, I was felt I was felt compelled to continue my work looking for an answer to this evil. I spent day after day translating more and more ancient occult texts pertaining to the dark arts which surround these entities. For years I worked through each book of the archaic collection until I came across a precious find. Imagine my surprise when I located a text which could lead to the downfall of the dominion of Ex Mortis. It was a text that I dared not translate whilst in the captivity of that isolated abode for fear of exposing to them my knowledge of this script titled Betus Adversarius, translated The Ancient Adversary. Over time, I worked to shake their attention. When I finally broke free, I fled the wilderness and returned to civilization, eventually relocating here to a beautiful Lockyer Fields homestead. It was here that I began to unravel the work I was forced to complete for the demonic Ex Mortis. I had managed to escape with the one text that could aid in my pursuit to right the wrong that I had been an integral part of. Within the pages of the Fetus Adversarius, I had discovered a great many things. Most important of all is that the source of the demon's power was also their weakness. The man who will become the hand his soul is the path between the spirit world and our own. Sever the hand, and the link is broken. From Vetus Adversarius, the door was unlocked by the blood of five, protected by fiends, once dead, now alive. Circled by blood from the dark ancient rite, the mortal man makes the ultimate sacrifice. A weapon of fire takes a fifth for its own, creating a path to where the dark spirits roam. His soul will pass through the ethereal gate. Beyond it lies his god-given fate. A dagger of faith shall sever the hand, mortally pierced by the soul-bearing man. The light of the path cut off from the land, reducing the scourge to fire, ash, and sand. 
love a good rhyming ominous prophecy or hopeful prophecy you know just yeah for many years i have studied this passage from every possible angle i have noted that the blood of five is once again prominent in creating the link between our physical world and the spirit realm but what of this mortal man's ultimate sacrifice what of this dagger that the passage speaks of and who is this man that the script references I cannot answer these questions, but I am certain all will become clear when the time is right. All I can do is make available the tools required for our saviour to rid the land of this plague when it inevitably comes to be. I know now that this is my purpose in what little years of life I have remaining. Now, more than ever, I believe that within our faith we will find the answer. The circle of life, portal to the spirit realm by the act of ultimate sacrifice involving the use of the weapon of fire. Hey. <laughs> now, do you think that's a small, <clears throat> hey, there's a Bible upstairs, wonder if. Wonder if. Oh shit, the exporters are getting closer. I don't have much time. I better, I better get. I better get better get back in the house and figure out where to go from there quickly. Oh, yeah, that's getting a little bit close for my liking. So then to finally open a suspicious looking Bible inside. Suspicious looking Bible. With this dagger, sever the link and the demon horde will fall. Within your faith lies the answer. A strange looking dagger was hidden inside this Bible. Within our faith, we will find the answer. It all makes sense now. Quite, quite literally, like, pst, it's hidden in the religious book. Cough, cough. It's blood of fire. Come, quickly, or we don't have much time. We don't have much time. The apparition of Saviour Rahim stands in the doorway at the end of the hall. I better follow him quickly. The ex mortis are almost here. Alrighty, ex Saviour. Now what? Sacrifice is written in blood on the wall. What is the sacrifice I have to make? I don't have much time to figure it out. Dry blood stains the floor in a circular pattern around the chair. Strange symbols sit at equidistant points around the circle. This must be the portal. The wooden chair sits in the middle of the ceremonial circle. I guess I'm supposed to sit here. What am I supposed to do? What is the sacrifice I have to make? Um, buddy, you know, weapon of fire might be, um, <clears throat> a weapon that you fire? Instead of involving, uh, you know, burn, burn, fire? A weapon of fire. This gun has taken four innocent lives. Oh, fuck, I have to take my own life with this gun to open the portal. That's the ultimate sacrifice. I'm the fifth innocent. Clearly I miscounted how many children were in that room, but okay. <laughs> can't do what you can't do, it's the populace, right? Hello? Dominion. Another strange beacon drifting in the distance. These boys need to be powered up and linked before they can move forward. Like before I can move onward. It appears to be some kind of beacon floating in the strange netherworld. There is a familiar looking ring of symbols orbiting around its axis. I like the door of that. This is amazing. Never could I have imagined that a world such as this existed. There is just empty space as far as the eye can see. I can't imagine spending an eternity here. Yeah, so let's maybe not. There we go. Again, that door effect. Two final beacons float like blue drifting in the swell of the ocean I know so well. Beyond this point lies my world. Earth. Or what is left of it, I guess. 
Symbols mean what was, what is, what will be. The last to read Ancient Dominion. I don't know how I can read them. I just can. Maybe it's this place. This is the doorway back to the Earth realm. So this is how the Ex Mortis are recorporalizing and flooding across the planet. Well, here goes nothing. Yep. Oh, hey. As much as I do love this Ex Mortis music. Oh, the tunnel. The tunnel from the first game. Fuck me, what a trip. I don't know where I am, but I've somehow regained my physical form. The hair on my neck is starting to end. This place feels inherently evil. Yeah, almost like something terrible happened. A long dead corpse is slumped up against the wall. Empty shell casings rest in his lap. It must have been one of the hell of a last stand. What a way to go. A box half filled with bullets sits next to the corpse. It appears that they are suitable for use in my gun. I better reload in case I run into trouble down here. The tunnel behind me appears to have recently fallen victim to a cave-in. My only way out of here is to push ahead through this archway. Okay. Oh. And it's Mortis. seems to stretch on forever to into the darkness, but I have nothing left to fear. I've finished what I came here to do, and now I venture onwards to into the unknown. Nice tunnel, beautiful. Another tunnel stretches off into the darkness ahead. I have no idea where I am, and no known way of telling how long this tunnel system goes for. Forever. Maybe. A set of cement rock steps lead upwards over the crest. I feel a very faint breeze against my skin. I must be on the right path to getting out of wherever here is. Yes. We should be in the woods soon enough. The last set of stairs welcome me with a stronger breeze blowing from the direction I am headed in. A very faint trace of light creeps over the crest here. I think I'm close to getting out of here, finally. Oh, hello there, mysterious hatted stranger. I finally found the exit, but a familiar figure blocks the doorway. It suddenly occurs to me that this is the entity I spoke to in the church. I've got so many questions for him. Yes, and I'm sure he has so many answers for us. Oh, Mr. Hannay, how good it is to see you again. Congratulations are definitely in order. You have accomplished something the combined forces of humanity could not. I must admit, when we last met in the church, I was unsure if you were the right person for the job. However, it seems my faith in you wasn't misplaced after all. Your actions have paved the way for a prosperous new age. Which reminds me, I must also remember to thank Xavier for his role in this. How is he, anyway? Still moaning about losing his little whore of a daughter? Uh. You so bearers. So complicated, yet 
Once again, I find myself surprised in the ease of which your kind can be manipulated. Much easier than my former brethren within the Exmortus. Hmm. Why the look of surprise? Surely you must have had some suspicions that I, Lord Play, was the one who set you upon this path. Come now, child. My fellow Exmortus deposed me as their leader many eons ago. Wouldn't it be rather unwise to put myself in a position for the same inevitable treachery to take place? Only now do you realize I needed you to remove my enemies and clear the path of my return to rule over a world which has always been rightfully mine. And it certainly seems that you came through for me with flying colors. So, Mr. Hannay, for your willingness, I commend you. For your part in this, I applaud you. And for your help in this, I grant you a gift. Quick <laughs> death.